Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Austin, Norway. In this video, we're going to end off my series on how to create a data analyst portfolio from scratch while using your own data. Now, I've used exercise data and you might have used something else. But in this video, we're going to focus on taking everything that we've, we have done so far and put it into a portfolio. In the first video, we created the data structure and the business request. In the second video, we created the data model. In the previous video, the third one, we created the dashboard with some calculations. And in this one, we're gonna take a lot of content from there. We're gonna put it into a portfolio and create a story around it so that you can demonstrate how you have taken the, the entire process of data analysis from the beginning to the end so that you can showcase that to someone else. But that's enough talk. Let's take a look at the portfolio and let me show you guys what I have created so far. So this is what my example portfolio looks like right now. I have a welcome page where I just tell you guys welcome because I just want you guys to know that this is an example portfolio. And on top I have my sales management project, which is the previous project that I did. I have the exercise analysis project, which is this one. I have my resume and my cover letter. That is what I have. And I just have a small intro page just to let people know that this is an example portfolio. Let's jump over to the exercise analysis project. So here you can see that I have actually structured this very similarly to how I structured my sales management project. I start off with some pictures, almost like a teaser, almost to kind of give the person who's looking at this sort of an idea of, okay, what is this going to show me? I can see some Excel, I can see some data models, I can see a dashboard, and he probably doesn't know what the picture on upright is, but that is something from Power Query. And if you are taking someone with you on a journey through a data analysis project, you need to tell them what did you start out with. And that is why I start with the business request and user stories. Now, of course, it's user story, but anyways, the business request for this project was created by the user himself, me, by deciding on a business, uh, it's actually a business process to analyze. And I've written uh, exercise data. The following user story was derived. This is only to give the person some sort of context. What is it that you are trying to solve? That is what I'm trying to show here. That is what I'm trying to tell the user. Okay, now he can put his mind into this and he can say, okay, we have someone here who is an exercise enthusiast. He wants to track his steps to ensure that he gets enough activity. And the acceptance criteria is a Power BI dashboard, which gives him an easy and quick overview of his exercise data. There you go. If I, if I come onto this page, I start to read this, I understand what is this about. Then we move on to the more technical stuff. Always, always, always business first. What are you trying to solve? Create the context, understand the con context, communicate the context, then we jump onto the technical stuff. There is no point knowing the most fancy joints in the world if you don't know what it is that you're trying to solve. So try and set the context first and explain the business request and what it is that you're trying to solve right away then we jump into the data collection and table structures and what i've done here is that i have explained a little bit the necessary data were collected and structured in excel files as you guys know we did that in the first video um exercise data was organized as a fact table measures calculations date and activity were organized as dimension tables for filtering data so here i'm just showing that i understand what is a fact table i understand what is a dimension table I understand somewhat how tables need to be structured to perform data analysis. Then we go down and I, I show a little bit, you know, I make screenshots and some explanations, but you can see that, um, what have I written here? Uh, recorded every single date, focus was an amount of steps, um, date column used to connect to the date dimension, activity foreign key is used to connect to the activity dimension. Then I have a simple uh, uh, screenshot of Excel easy as that and then i've written fo following steps were done in power bi to transform this table i am communicating that i understand some data transformation and i have taken a picture of the different steps from from the actual file these are the query setting steps actually let me show you guys this because i bet you guys want to know how i did this let me see if i can get that real quick give me one second so there we are i have now opened the project and if you want to know where you can find the different query steps that have been applied as you have transformed your data go to transform data and then find out which table is it that you are trying to show the steps for so out on the left side when you click the table look on the right side it says applied steps you can take a screenshot of that and just talk about what were the different things so when i choose dim activity 
it shows the steps. When I choose dim date, it shows the steps. When I choose fact activity, yes, you guessed right, it shows the steps. You can paste that back in. Let's jump back into the portfolio. You can paste that back in and it gives just a nice, once again, a nice story step by step. What did you do to prepare and transform the data for data analysis purposes? Now let's go to dim activity. Um, you know, very just overall general. This is what it is, dim activity. Notice just the fact that I write dim underscore activity means that I understand that this is a dimension table. You might not think it matters a lot, but as you get more and more into data analysis, as you learn more about table structure, data models, fact tables and dimension tables is going to be important to understand. This shows that you understand that. Um, dim activity describes two different types of activities, walking and running. Um, and then I explain, you know, what were the different purposes. Some days I chose to walk, some days I choose to run. Um, and I also pointed out some minor data issues in the table, in this table was later cleaned up and corrected. And then when you walk down, Guess what? You see the different steps. I have explained what were the different steps. What do they what do they correct? I am explaining my transformations. I am taking whoever wants to read this on a journey from the beginning through the transformations, and we're gonna keep going like this until we come to the actual dashboard. Um, dim date, same same things. Pictures of the settings, uh, the query settings, pictures of the steps, explaining what am I doing. Then I go into the data model. I have a picture of my data model. Um, if you want to know where you find that, um, we can go back into Power BI and then, excuse me, there on the left side, model view, here you have the data model. Keep your calculations table out of this, just take the data, just take the data model. Um, and what I've uh, explained is, um, we can see that the fact table is connected to two dimension tables with the correct relationship established. One to many between dimension and fact tables. That is a detail that I like to throw in there. You don't have to. Um, it just tells you that you understand the relationship between the dimension tables and fact tables. You could even point out that the fact table is on the bottom, the dimension tables are on the top. That's also something which is a best practice in Power BI because the dimension tables are filtering down to the fact table. So visually, it makes a lot of sense. If, if I read this portfolio and I saw you do that, I would know that you understand dimension tables and fact tables and I would understand that you know how dimension tables filters downwards to the fact table. Once again, small nuances, but it creates a story and I can I can kind of start to think, okay, what is this person thinking? Okay, he started out with a, uh, with a case and now I can see what is he doing with the data. This is how it's structured, this is the model. Okay, great. Let's jump into the calculations. <clears throat> so what I've done here is I have just gone in and let's jump over to the report view and on the different calculations, I have simply gone in, I have looked at what is the calculation, copy paste, schmack, put it in there, and just try and type some small um, some small notes around it. Um, everything, the following cal calculations were created in, Power BI in the Power BI reports using DAX, data analysis expressions. So I know what, what is the expression language of Power BI. Also something that I know you guys don't hear that often about, DAX, level of details, set analysis. Set analysis is in Click. Level of details is in Tableau. DAX is in Power BI. Power BI. Very, very powerful stuff. It can save you a ton of time in terms of data analysis. It can save you a ton of time in terms of trying to figure out advanced things in SQL that you can do in DAX. And this is a language that evolves as data analysis is also evolving. So if you scroll down, average steps, and I've written just a little bit about it. This is a simple average function, total steps, simple sum function. Um, I've tried to explain the calculate function um, and, and what that does uh, for the steps running, steps walking, percentage of total, walking percentage of total, the different uh, running and walking of percentage of totals. I've even taken in my cumulative measure and my week over week change. Here I have decided um, to keep it fairly simple because they get a little bit longer there are different functions at, at one time here. It's gonna be to come too much for the end user. But what? But he gets it. This is a little bit more advanced. There are functions. Okay, you know, in the last one, I've even included some variables. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just more complicated. And I, I don't want it to be a long text explaining the, the calculation. If someone, if someone reads this, they wanna know more about what I can do, we can talk about it. I can explain it. But there's no point writing a dissertation about week over week percentage change of steps. That's fine. 
Um, and the last part, the last part of the story is to show them the dashboard. We want them to be able to see the, the dashboard, go in and click around. So what I've written, exercise analysis dashboard, finished report consists of two different dashboards. One is more of a basic version, while the second version contains more advanced visualizations. Um, to enable these visualizations, the calcula calculation language stacks, as I said previously, were used, click the picture to open the dashboard and try it out. So I've taken a picture of the basic version and the advanced version, and I can say that I have forgotten to add a link to the advanced, but that is only a page um, um, right next to the basic. So if I click this, it's gonna open up, and you can see here, I can click around, I can, you know, I can play around with the dashboard, I can go to the second page, I can see the more advanced, and, and the user can kinda see himself what it is that you have created. And it just gives such a better kind of ending to the story. He can go in and he can play around with it. He can click around. He can see that this lives. It makes sense. He can look at the numbers if he wants to, you know, know more about the results of what you what you collected. So, so I think that's just a great ending. So once again, I want to point out, I want to really, really emphasize in this video because I didn't really emphasize it that much in the in my other project when I showed how I created the portfolio or how I added it, and that is that. You know, notice how it's it's a story from the beginning to end, and I know I'm re repeating myself, but it is so important that you just that you don't don't just put up some code and some some simple things and expect someone to just understand it, because they're not going to be able to. You need to take them through it, and if you are going to present it to someone, this is so much easier to present because it is structured as a story. If you guys want to see how I assemble this, how I put this together check out the video in my link. I use the exact same process as I did for my sales management project, except there I spent a lot more time. I emphasized the building process. In this one, I wanted to show you guys, but I also wanted to talk more about the story which I'm trying to create with this, so that the combination of two gives you how do you do it and what is the purpose. So that is the end result of this portfolio. Now it is online. I have taken a lot of the information from the previous videos. I have constructed a story assembled it and now it is ready to use for an interview or if I want to showcase some of my data analysis skills. Let me know in the comments if you have some questions. If you want some feedback on your portfolio, you can also leave the links in the comment section and I will take a look and share some of my thoughts. Other than that, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.